Boulevard Detail present four. Older four. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Rabbi Beth Singer from Congregation Emmanuel here in San Francisco. It is with such sadness and shock that we are here to acknowledge the untimely death of such a wonderful human being our beloved mayor, Ed Lee. Anita, Brianna, Tanya, you can never possibly know how many lives your husband and your father touched throughout his life. My prayer for you and for all the residents of this great city is that today's service will be a source of comfort to you. Today, I invoke the prophet Micah, who inquired, what is it that God requires of a human being? Only this, says Micah, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Mayor Lee exemplified this prophetic vision. Here is my little story, which is just one of countless examples of Mayor Lee's justice, mercy, humility. A group of Jewish teenagers had asked me to set up a meeting with the mayor for them to speak with the mayor regarding their concerns about gun violence. Mayor Lee graciously invited the teens and me into his office. This very busy mayor listened intently to these future civic leaders. He shared with us a surprising variety of measures he had already taken. I commented to the mayor that I hadn't seen any of this on his website and that maybe he should publicize his successes a little bit more. Mayor Lee did allow that he was not looking for more attention from the NRA. But also he was clear that he would rather focus on making a safer city than on promoting himself. Two rabbis wrote a beautiful piece of contemporary Jewish liturgy. And I share my own version of it now with all of you, but especially with Tanya and Brianna, and with you, Anita. There's a refrain to this prayer. It's the words, we will remember him. And you'll know when to say it, and I'm going to invite you to say it with me. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. When we continue San Francisco's work of justice, mercy, and care for everyone, we will remember him. So long as we live, our Edley too shall live, for he is now a part of us, for we remember him.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lyndon Breed, and I'm the acting mayor for the city and county of San Francisco. Thank you, Rabbi Singer, for that prayer, and thank you, everyone, for being here today for this celebration of life of our mayor, Edwin Ma Lee. Thank you to Anita, Brianna, and Tanya for sharing your father with our city, for allowing them him to work with us. And that, we know, has taken time away from your family. And we want to know, we want you to know how many lives your dad and your husband have touched all over the city and all over this country. Our condolences are also with the entire Lee family at this time. In these difficult days since we lost Mayor Lee, I find myself often reflecting on what he meant to all of us, what he meant to the Chinese American community, to those who worked alongside him, and to the city he served. Four years ago, I joined Mayor Lee with Anita on a sister city trip to Shanghai, China. Now, the mayor certainly has his fans and accolades here in San Francisco, to be sure. But in China, San Francisco's first Chinese-American mayor, he was like a superstar, an icon. But to everyone we met and everywhere we went, Mayor Lee was like Beyonce with the mustache. <laughs> Yet Ed was always Ed. He carried his own luggage. He held the door for his wife, Anita, and for others. He brought his little doggy bags home from the restaurants after he ate. When he passed away, the mayor's budget director, Melissa Whitehouse, wrote a beautiful tribute to him, one of many from his staff and colleagues. Mayor Lee treated us with kindness and respect, she said. He changed his mind based on new information, made tough decisions that would pay off long after he was gone. He compromised, he was honest, he cared deeply. Working for him was all parks and rec, no house of cards. Now we all know, even before Mayor Lee's passing, San Francisco has been fighting for its values amidst some stormy national winds. When cynicism prevails and facts no longer matter, when leaders move up by tearing others down, when they serve their egos above their people, when immigrants are made to be a threat and hope wanes, Mayor Lee was a guardian amongst those dangerous winds. Our mayor had kindness, he had class, he served others before himself, he listened, he cared, and he fought for our city, all of its people, with the quiet dignity of a man who knows exactly what he stands for. People have been talking a lot about legacy. You know, to me, Mayor Lee's greatest legacy isn't the economic turnaround, or the warrior's return to San Francisco, or his enormous investment in transportation and housing. Friends, it's much simpler. Ed Lee showed our children that public service can still be noble. For all those he mentored, those he lifted up, those he fought and helped as the civil rights attorney, for the thousands of public housing residents whose lives he transformed, for all the opportunities that he helped to create for the generations of Asian Americans he inspired, 
and for the San Francisco, San Franciscans that he served for most of his adult life. We say thank you, Ed Lee. Thank you for all you have done and all you have sacrificed to take care of so many. We love you, we miss you, and we will honor you by continuing the hard work that you started here in our great city. Thank you. So to the family, I want to express my feelings and condolences upon the passing of your father and your husband, our mayor. I can say our mayor because I am a son of San Francisco, wherever I may. I temporarily went over to Oakland for a while, but then quickly got back to Sacramento. Anyway, um, I w what I want to say is that Ed Lee is a very unusual political leader. I've met a lot of political leaders for the last 50 years. And Ed was a person who uh, had an infectious smile, had a feeling that he expressed that you wanted to work with him. And whenever I got a call from Ed Lee, uh, it was always pleasant. I, I didn't have to shrink back, what am I, what's he gonna ask for now? Even when he asked for things, and he's always asking for San Francisco, he did it with such a charm and a humanity that it was always welcome. He was uh, an artless person, not affected, very straight. And in the world of noise and uh, all the excessive communication that our uh, digital world uh, presently embodies, uh, just mere humanity is an incredible exception to what we encounter. Ed Lee was a real person. He was a person that communicated integrity, he, a love of life. Uh, I never saw him down. He, every time you saw him, he was happy. He was expressing a very upbeat attitude. And in the world that we see today of politics, upbeat attitude is hard to come by, particularly when it's genuine, when it was real. And that's how I saw Mayor Lee. Um, terrible loss, terribly unexpected. Uh, life has its surprises, and not all of them are always pleasant. But Ed Lee will be remembered. He gave politics a good name. He gave San Francisco a good name because he was a very good man. Thank you. I make these remarks on behalf of two of my colleagues who are here today, the senator from Hawaii, the wonderful Maisie Hirono, and my colleague and friend, former district attorney of this city, former um, attorney general of the state of California, Kamala Harris. As has just been said, Ed was soft-spoken. He was reserved, and he was humble but he was also incredibly effective in government management with a proud history as a civil rights attorney. In 1974, Ed graduated from Bowdoin College in Maine. That same year, he had the great fortune of meeting a new Mandarin tutor while studying in Hong Kong. That tutor, Anita, and that student, Ed, fell in love. Six years later, in 1980, Ed and Anita were married. In the ensuing years, Ed and Anita were blessed with two beautiful daughters, Tanya and Bri Brianna. Together, the four of them created a strong and enduring family bond that provided Ed with tremendous support throughout his public sector career. During his years of study at Bolt Hall, Ed became interested in civil rights. His first notable legal case 
was representing the residents of Pingyong. That's a housing complex in Chinatown in their first rent strike. Throughout the 1980s, he continued his civil rights work as an attorney within the Asian Law Caucus. He then began an unparalleled public service career. And ladies and gentlemen, I am not aware of any civil servant, any elected official, who has served in as many leadership and management positions in this city. Ed Lee's 27 years of public service to San Francisco are truly compelling, and they are also unique. In 1989, he directed the office implementing the newly created whistleblower ordinance. I think Art Agnos had something to do with that. Then just two later, years later, in 1991, he became director of the Human Rights Commission. He served there for five years until 96, when he became city purchaser, a position through which he was able to support local businesses and most importantly, local minority businesses. In 2000, Mayor Willie Brown appointed him as director of the Department of Public Works, where he oversaw the redesign of the United Nations Plaza, Harding Park Clubhouse, and the teardown of the Central Freeway. In 2005, Mayor Brown appointed him to the, as the city's chief administrative officer the highest-ranking, non-elected official in San Francisco. There, he oversaw 27 city departments, including the city's new 311 call center and the city's technology department. Now, these weren't small jobs. Public Works has a budget of hundreds of millions, and the city has a budget of billions. With that record of service and accomplishment, he was thrust further into the spotlight in 2011 when Gavin Newsom moved to Sacramento and Ed became mayor. Now, San Francisco is the kind of city where a mayor has to be hands-on. It's not just receiving councilor officials and hosting parties. It's understanding what's going on, balancing budgets, responding to constituents, solving problems, and knowing this city in every street and district. Ed Lee was that kind of mayor, and he did an exemplary job. He when he took over, the city was in recession. Not only did we bounce back, our unemployment rate, which had been nearly 10%, when he took over is down to 2.7% today. Housing has always been a big issue, but under his leadership, the city added more housing units than under any other mayor. 17,000 new or rehabilitated units have been completed with a goal of 30,000 by 2022. Of course, the remaining problem is their affordability. He was a leader in the fight against homelessness, developing and implementing something called a navigation center, which I had have the pleasure of visiting and which has proven to be effective in handling chronic homelessness. Lifetime proponent of the environment, leading San Francisco to reduce greenhouse gases by 27%. And of course, he always remained a steadfast champion for human and civil rights. I'd also like to note that his election and his six years of service as mayor were paramount for the Asian American community. Ed's election brought a tremendous pride to this community, and rightly so. San Francisco's history in prior centuries is marked by prejudice against the Chinese community. In prior centuries, from mistreatment by the police to restrictive deeds in real estate, San Francisco was not a friendly place for the Asian and Chinese culture and people. However, years go on, 
Times change, the community fights for its rights, and things improve. In 2011, when Ed became mayor, this community showed the city that indeed a Chinese American can reach the pinnacle of public service in this city. I remember an anecdote. When I was mayor, I had a friend, at least one. His name was Bob McCarthy. Many of you knew him. He had five children, four boys and a girl. He told me he walked into his front living room and he saw a semicircle of chairs, the four boys and the girl in a big chair. And he said to them, what are you doing? And they said, we're playing mayor. And he said, what? Well, why is your sister in the big chair? Well, you know, Dad, only girls can be mayor. Just as that story can aptly apply to Mayor Willie Brown, it most certainly applies to Mayor Lee. One of the great legacies of Ed's life is that a new generation of Asian Americans now know that an Asian American can run and be successful in the highest office in this city. To Brianna and Tanya, you can be so proud of your father. You can hold your head up high knowing he was always intent on helping people around him and making the world a better place. Your dad was one fine man. And to Anita, I know how hard things are right now. I've learned this myself. All I can say is that family and friends and the knowledge of his love for the three of you will never be diminished. Just think of this, head of the Human Rights Commission, purchaser of the city, head of the Department of Public Works, chief administrative officer, and mayor of the city and county of San Francisco. Yes, Ed Lee was an outstanding man. Thank you.
from everybody in our family. Thank you all so much for your thoughts and prayers, for the flowers that you've sent, for the donations you've made in his name, and for the beautiful memorial outside City Hall and in front of our home. We are so deeply touched and moved by this outpouring of love and support. By now, you've heard a lot about who our dad was as a mayor, as a colleague, as a friend, and as a person who cared deeply about San Francisco. What you probably have not heard is who he was as a father. For our family, our dad was not only our inspiration, but our constant source of humor, laughter, and lightness. Most of the time, he told jokes that he could barely get through because he was laughing so hard at them himself. Sometimes it was through his text that he would send us as he went about his day, like a bitmoji of him in a warrior's jersey doing a slam dunk. Other times it was through these ridiculous trinkets that he would keep around the house that just delighted him, like an animatronic gopher from the movie Caddyshack that would dance and play the song I'm All Right by Kenny Loggins when you pressed a button. He kept it by the doorway of our house, and for years, when we heard that song, we knew he had come home. But throughout everything, his passion for service and community still permeated in everything that he did, including with us. When I was very young, my dad started to take me door knocking, to campaign rallies, to protests, and neighborhood watch meetings. He showed me what it was to work alongside others to get something done. Nothing was too small or too big for him. From stuffing envelopes to speaking on stage, my dad was happy to do it all, often until late hours in the night. And he would always make sure we picked up some donuts for those meetings. When I was in high school, he took me out with him every weekend to go and paint over graffiti or pick up trash in the streets. At age 15, waking up at 8 a.m. on a Saturday to go paint over graffiti was pretty much the last thing that I wanted to do. But he didn't give in to my complaints. He told me to get up, go put on an orange vest, take a paintbrush, work to beautify some of San Francisco's streets, and also there might be some burritos later. More recently, just last year, I was lucky enough to be visiting San Francisco when my dad invited me to come out to a quick event with him before we went out to dinner. As it turns out, that event was a celebration, a daycare in the Excelsior that provided spots for over 100 children. It had been in danger of losing its building due to rising rents, but it had just secured the ability to buy their own building thanks to years of work by a group of people that included my dad. My dad often texted my sister and me every time he was able to accomplish something that he was proud of, but this was one of those rare moments where I was able to see in person the outpouring of love and sheer gratitude of the people whose lives he had impacted with this help. There were no cameras, no reporters to take note, but people saw him and hugged him with tears in their eyes and he hugged them back. It was absolute love for the city that kept him going. He's done so much for us and for this city over the years, but we know that he would have still wanted to do so much more. And so we've set up a charitable fund in his memory at the San Francisco Foundation, the Edwin M. Lee Community Fund. We hope to use it to fund causes that were important to him and to us, addressing homelessness, fighting discrimination, protecting immigrants, protecting the environment, and increasing affordability for San Franciscans. Thank you so much again for your love and support. We will carry his memory with us for the rest of our lives, and we hope that his spirit of selflessness, humor, and dedication will continue on through all of us here. Thank you. Thank you.
well, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't supposed to happen. And uh, it's not gotten a lot easier, I know, for a lot of us. I think more than anything else, today for me is a tribute to decency. The quiet contradiction, right, of Ed Lee, this person that was beloved, but in so many ways underappreciated, whose charisma was kindness, whose personal cause was ubiquitous, but his disagreements were never prevalent. Someone who served an extraordinary life in public service, but never sought the public spotlight. Someone that was uncool in some ways, but had friends like Willie Mays and Joe Montana, <laughs> about the coolest people on earth. His was a legacy of humility. That's a word we don't hear a lot in public life, humility. You know, I was thinking when Senator Feinstein was talking about that resume, I was thinking about purchasing and human rights and everything he did, Department of Public Works and city administrator. And I wonder how much of that he chose versus all those positions choosing him. It's like the mayor's office. That office was presented along the way of his path. In some ways, he never sought it. It chose him. A man of remarkable character. A decent and honorable person. Someone whose legacy is hard to follow. We live in a time of you know, growing narcissism, a time of sort of rank polarization, under-moralization, and then there was Ed Lee. Decent, honorable, humble human being who always wanted to do the right thing who never wanted to take other folks down. I think if there's any legacy ahead, it's, it's a reminder that life is short. And our wisdom is way too limited to win fleeting victories at other people's expenses. Ed's life was about triumphing together. You know, San Francisco today, our values will never be America's tomorrow until we come to grips, as the senator said, with our yesterdays. It's just interesting to me that Ed was born on May 5th, 1952. Almost 70 years to the day that the Chinese Exclusion Act was signed, May 6th, 1882. What an extraordinary journey this city has been on. It's absolutely right. What pride, almost seven years ago, when we were standing quite literally right here, what pride we all felt, but what pride the Chinese community, the Asian community must have felt at that moment, after that history and all that hostility and all that negativity, here it was, the first Chinese American mayor. The xenophobia in the 1870s, the nativism, the racism, that guy, Dennis Kearney, and the Working Man's Party that began and ended every speech by saying, whatever else we do, the Chinese must go. All that a distant memory at that moment. It's a tale of resistance or, and resilience, and it's part of the great narrative that is San Francisco. Ed Lee was my friend. Ed Lee cared deeply about everybody in this room. Ed Lee will be missed. 
And I hope for the sake of all of us that his legacy lives inside of us and that we stop to just consider that life is not a game. You know, it's not about being cold or calculated. It's about something so much more ennobling. And I hope we can just take the edge off a little bit, not just in the city, but the state and maybe more broadly the nation. Try to consider folks, you know, that are trying to do the right thing. That wake up every day just trying to add a little value. Not impugn their integrity, not try to take them down. Try to help lift them up. That's Ed's legacy. Anita, I'm so sorry. I, I miss him. I know this is heartbreaking. Your kids and entire family, thank you guys for being here in the bottom of my heart. To the staff whose heart is broken, to Steve Kava and Jason, to his best friend in the world, Muhammad, to the staff that is trying to reconcile this, we got your back. You're not on your own. You're part of his family. You're part of this city's family. And to the people of this city, we thank you for your support. We thank you for having Ed Lee's back. And as we move forward, thank you for having, in your heart and mind, Ed Lee's legacy. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Congress of the United States, I'm very sad to join Senator Feinstein and others who are here joining the official family of our community to bring sympathy and condolences to Anita, to Brianna, to Tanya, and to the entire family. When we learned during the night of Ed Mayor Lee's passing, it was so shocking for all of us. We met that morning in our usual Democratic Caucus meeting. Barbara Lee came forward, who is here today, and she presented to our caucus our sad loss. Jackie Spear and I were there crying too much to even speak. Jackie, Barbara had the composure. But then many members of the House of Representatives joined in a congressional record statement singing the praises of this great man, Ed Lee, so that everyone who followed the workings of Congress would know the esteem in which he was held. Kamala Harris is here, and we also were joined in our uh, singing the praises of Ed Lee by our Congressional His uh, Asian Pacific Caucus and Maisie Hirano. Senator Hirano is here representing not only the Senate, but that caucus. So the full value of who he was, what his legacy is and the difference he made will be there forever for everyone to see. So we gather here heartbroken, heartbroken. And in this, uh, I didn't know this until now, but it's fitting that we gather in this, of course, glorious building beneath the rotunda inscription, which says, San Francisco, O glorious city of our hearts, that has been tried and not found wanting, go thou with like spirit to make the future thine. That was what it was about. He was hardworking, he was hopeful, he dreamed of securing San Francisco's position as a dynamic, innovative model for the nation, and so many mayors are here, the mayor of Denver, the mayor of Oakland, the mayor of San Jose, many of our previous mayors who have been referenced. Mayor Lee's decade of service to our city, more than a decade, leaves a, an enduring, inspiring legacy that generations of San Franciscans will enjoy. So, so many times the reporters have said to many of us, when was the last time you saw him? And for many of us in this room, the last time we were really with him for a long period of time 
was the interfaith breakfast right before Thanksgiving. And it was one of those times when Ed spoke from the heart so beautifully, as he always did, but he was connecting. He connected that morning on the subject of homelessness and promised to take 1,000 people off the streets this winter, and the crowd was so with him. They were people he had worked with over the years. Many of you are here. Certainly, Bishop Andrus was there. And then to see him up here, when they unfly, uh, uh, and he always had that smile. He smiled when he talked about it, gave you confidence, gave you hope that it would happen. He smiled and connected when in plural, the LGBT flag, the rainbow flag, right before the march. He smiled when we went to Youth Build. We talked about housing and homelessness. We talked about civil rights. We talked about education, which was so important to him. He smiled when we went, and that means lifetime learning. When we went to Youth Build, where these kids with the members of unions who were there to train young people into professions tasked by the private sector so they would have jobs. He smiled when he when Chamber was debuted here because he saw the importance of the arts of bringing people together. He took pride in his own heritage and bringing his heritage and the arts together here, but also taking it to China, seeing how that would be bonding. The pride he took in his Asian American heritage, his Chinese American heritage, enabled him to see the pride that others took in theirs. And so that increased his appreciation for what his challenge was in this country, well, in this city, but as a model to the country to bring people together. Every subject that he was involved in, he smiled, he connected, whether it was housing, cutting ribbons at housing events, whether it was youth build, wherever it was, when it was time to take the official photo, people would say, where's Ed? Where's the mayor? The mayor was listening. He was listening. He was connecting with the people who were affected by it all. Such dignity, such humility, such humility for this great man. It's really a terrible, terrible loss for us, but we have to appreciate the time that we did have with him. I'll share one story that he appreciated because, you know, when you're appointed and you're doing the job and Senator Feinstein um, spelled it out so clearly, it's one thing. But when you get in the arena to run, it's another story. Uh, Governor, you know that. When you're a candidate, it's another story. So I, was, I told him this story, which we, he laughed, I'll tell you. There was this African Presbyterian bishop in Africa, and he posted this statement on the wall of a hospital there. Some nun sent me this story, which those of you who have ever run for office or had an official position can identify with. And on it it said, one day when I happily, when I leave this life and I happily go to meet my maker, he will say to me, show me your wounds. And if I have no wounds, he will say, was nothing worth fighting for? Well, our dear Ed, he can show his wounds because so much was worth fighting for. And he can show them with a smile and with great pride. And as the Ecclesiasticus has said, and when it, when it has the uh, version that says, now let us praise great men, the people will tell of his wisdom and the con congregation will continue to sing his praise. Anita, Tanya, Brianna, the entire family, thank you for sharing Ed with all of us. Thank you for sharing him with the world. In his honor, our congressional delegation has a flag flown over the Capitol in his name just hours after we got the news of his passing. Here he was from an immigrant family 
flags thrown over the Capitol, dignitaries gathered uh, to sing his praises, but he'd be most interested in what the people he worked for. He knew that a measure of his success, or any public figure's success, was not the honors received, but the difference that he made in the lives of regular people in our community. I hope it is a comfort to all of you that so many people share your grief, mourn your loss, and are praying for you at this sad time. Everybody in this room loves San Francisco. Everybody in this room loves Ed Lee. Thank you. tiny corner of this great big world to find the place that you love my home upon the hill I find I love you still Good afternoon, and that wasn't me that was singing, <laughs> according to the program. Wonderful, lovely Anita Lee, First Lady of, of San Francisco, asked me to do two things for this event. One, she said, I'd like for you to be a speaker because you're funny. Well, somehow I did not feel like I'd, in this great, beautiful hall that he called the People's Palace. Of course, the girls did a wonderful job. You know, often he opened a 
meeting or when he was making a speech, and he said, I'm going to be short because I'm short. <laughs> and we often didn't know what he was going to say, but it was always delightful because he had a delightful, as we all know, that know him well, or even people on the street know that he had a delightful sense of humor. Like Brianna said, he told jokes, and I went around to all the staff and I said, can you remember these jokes? And like Brianna said, nobody could remember the jokes because he laughed harder than anybody else, and finally people were laughing because he had a wonderful laugh with those twinkly, well, just like the picture, squinty eyes and that wonderful smile, and the laughter rang out when he was there. When he became uh, also, you know, in meetings, sort of heavy-duty meetings, he would lean over and give a quip or an aside, and it broke up the meeting and made it a little bit easier to go through things that a mayor has to go through. When he became mayor, the protocol group went in to see what kind of style we didn't know what was going to happen, and we learned that he was wonderful at protocol, although he broke some of the rules. Uh, he was wonderful. You know, in San Francisco, dignitaries come here, delegations come here because they love San Francisco. We have the most wonderful, wonderful consuls generals who are here today, and one of the largest, and the country send their very best people here. So Ed Lee, Mayor Ed Lee said, I want to be engaged. And you know why he did? Because he respected the diversity of this city, maybe because he was Chinese American, but I think it was really that plus the heart. He loved the city and he wanted it to be shining. We went on lots of trips because we have 18 sister cities. And there was a thread that went through all these trips. People really liked Ed Lee. He made friends. And friends, in, uh, in the, uh, going abroad and meeting people, you can get things done if you make friends. And I know somebody very well that's in this room who was our secret weapon when we had problems, our potential problems, uh, with different areas around the world. And this person had that, has that same ability of making friends and making things happen at home and abroad. I refer to him as my secretary, but the rest of the world knows him as the former Secretary of State, George Schultz. You speak about friendship. Charlotte, but friendship engenders trust. And we all know that in human relationships, trust is the coin of the realm. You can deal with a person you trust, you can't deal with somebody you don't trust. So Ed Lee spread that trust over the diversity of the city, of our state, of our country, and around the world. So thank you, Ed. Well, that was short but important, and you're tall. <laughs> so Ed Lee led us in a wonderful direction of all of the areas that we had to do for this great city. And there are people around the world that have sent. We have received letters phone calls, emails, all around the world saying how wonderful he was. I happened to be with uh, Anita and her family uh, earlier this week, and a call came in from former President Bill Clinton. And he had that same feeling because he said, I liked Ed Lee the moment I met him. And that friendship grew and grew and grew. And he said so many wonderful things to, I think, Tanya, you took the call. And I have some other letters, there are many, but if I may, Anita, I'd like to read some for you and for the rest of you. I'm glad you're still here. <laughs> this one is from, let's see, let me get it first here. 
This is from former President Barack Obama. Dear Anita, Brianna, and Tanya, Michelle and I were so sorry to hear of Ed's passing. I extend my heartfelt condolences as you mourn his loss and reflect upon his life. Ed's passion and dedication to the city he loved inspired everyone who had the privilege to know and work alongside him. I know he will be deeply missed, and I want you to know that I am incredibly grateful for everything he put into advancing our shared vision and values. While no words can ease the pain you must feel, I hope you take comfort in knowing that his efforts to shape a future of greater justice and prosperity both across San Francisco and throughout the nation will continue to inspire generations to come. Again, please accept my sincere condolences. You will remain in my thoughts during this difficult time. Signed, Barack Obama. Well, we heard from Bill, and now we're here from Hillary. It is to you, Anita, your family, and to San Franciscans. It is with a heavy heart that I send greetings to all those gathered today in the soaring rotunda of San Francisco City Hall to honor and celebrate the life of your late mayor and my dear friend, Ed Lee. I was shocked, weren't we all, and saddened when I learned the news of Ed's passing. Throughout his trailblazing career in public service, he never stopped fighting for those who are all too often invisible to our society. As a joyful champion for civil rights and human rights, Ed made his mark on your beloved city through his smart and steady leadership, fighting for affordable housing, immigrant rights, minority businesses, expanded public works, and economic investment and opportunity. He never forgot whom he served, nor his roots as the child of Chinese immigrants. I was proud to know and work with Ed and will always cherish the time we shared together. As you gather today to shed a tear, share a laugh, and remember and celebrate Mayor Ed Lee, please know that my warmest wishes and heartfelt condolences are with you the Lee family, and the people of San Francisco. Ed was loved by many. He will but long be remembered and dearly missed. Signed, Hillary Rodham Clinton. The last letter is one that I can deliver when it, Anita asked me to do two things. She said there is a song that she loved, and I think a lot of you love it too. It was interesting that when you asked me about that song. Just out of the blue came a letter. I figured that Ed had something to do with it, getting here. And it is from the ambassador of San Francisco, of, of San Francisco Tony Bennett. It says, to the Lee family, Anita, Brianna, and Tanya, and the city of San Francisco. It is with deep sadness to know that the next time I come to your beautiful city, that Mayor Ed Lee will not be there to greet me in person. As he was a dear friend and will be greatly missed by so many. However, his lasting legacy of support, dedication, and love for San Francisco will always be present and will continue on as part of this great city's history and vibrant future. Then he says, I know I have sung this lyric thousands of times, and this is in quotations because it's from that song. It says, your golden sun will shine for me. And Mayor Lee was a golden son of San Francisco, and his contributions to the city will continue to shine for all of its citizens. And as you may know, we merely dedicated a statue in front of the Fairmont Hotel. Right now it has a red scarf around its neck, 
kind of try to keep warm. And he was there for that dedication. And many times, as you know, Tony Bennett has been here for us as an ambassador for our city. And Ed Lee was an ambassador for our city. So now may I present Mr. Tony Bennett on video. He would have loved to have been here. The loveliness of Paris seems somehow sadly gay. The glory that was Rome is of another day. I was terribly alone and forgotten in Manhattan. I'm going home to my city by the bay. I left my heart in San Francisco, high on a hill. It calls to me to be where little cable cars climb halfway to the stars, the morning fog may chill the air, I don't care, my love waits there, in San Francisco, above the blue, and windy sea when I come home to you San Francisco your golden sun will shine for me To the Lee family, Anita and the two daughters, San Francisco has on this day appropriately acknowledged and celebrated the life of a man who was different than any of his predecessors. Present in this room are representatives of those predecessors. From the Christopher years, the Shelley years, the Alioto years, the Moscone years, the Feinstein years, the Agnos years, the Jordan years, the Brown years, the Newsom years, Ed Lee was different than any of that category of groups that I just described. He really did not want the job. I'm not sure Ed Lee ever wanted any job, except one. When I became mayor of San Francisco, I had known of Ed Lee in part because he was one of the lawyers that handled the integrating and integrating of our fire department. He was part of the challenge that Bob Dimmons and that group of black people who wanted to fight fires, and they sued, and there was a consent decree, and Ed Lee was one of the lawyers with that consent decree. And so I knew of him first from that perspective. And then my friend Art Agnos told me about this person that he had had doing whistleblowing activities and then the human rights. And I said, who is he? And he gave me his number. And the number 
was Oakland. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't hire anybody from Oakland unless he lives in San Francisco. I called Ed Lee in. He really didn't want the job, but I said, you've got to take the job, but you also have to move to San Francisco. What do you mean I have to move to San Francisco? I said, that's probably the only good advice you're ever going to get from me. <laughs> he accepted that. Where was Ed Lee about to take groceries home to? To the house that he bought as a result of my insisting that if he takes a job with me, he had to live in this city. Now you should know that there are mayors from all over the country here. Benjamin from Columbus, who will head the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Hancock from Denver. These are all people who were friends of Ed Lee's. There are mayors from the nine counties, the Bay Area, Libby Shaft, the mayor of San Jose, mayor of Richmond, the mayor of Sacramento. They were all here because they genuinely were friendly with, respected, and honored Ed Lee. That's the kind of impression Ed Lee could make and did make on everybody. Governor Jerry Brown is here because Ed Lee's last trip out of San Francisco was to go to Chicago to participate with 36 other mayors or 35 other mayors to sign a document with reference to the business of climate change and global warming. Ed Lee was doing those things. And Rabbi Singer, Ed Lee would never put any of that on his informational reference source, unlike Gavin and me and <laughs> all these other people. He didn't do ads at all. I took more credit for what Ed Lee did than probably anybody else because I had been part of the conspiracy to get him to take the mayor's job. He didn't want the mayor's job. He really did not want the mayor's job. And Newsom, you're right. He didn't want the mayor's job. So what did we do? He was off in Hong Kong. We talked Newsom and to stay in an extra day so that we could do what Ed Lee never did have to do, never would have done, and wouldn't have been good at it. We had to get six votes for him to become the mayor, following Newsom. But we needed one more day. We convinced Newsom not to get sworn in as lieutenant governor for one more day to give us a little more time. We also had to make sure that Ed Lee didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and sure enough, Anita helped, kept him over there, but he had to be home because sometimes in this town when you get the votes, you better call the election immediately, otherwise the votes might disappear. Sure enough, he headed home start to get on the airplane, and some airport personnel person welcomed Mr. Mayor on the airplane. Ed Lee had no idea what she was talking about. He turned around to look to see who she was talking about. She was talking about Ed Lee. Unfortunately, it was not totally given away because he landed and we got him to, in fact, accept the job. Why did we do that? We did that because Ed Lee had the qualities of a person whom if you did an interview of all of the ones that I just spoke about, he would be the only one would be rated appropriately by the headhunters as to who ought to be mayor. All the rest of us would be considered okay, 
but not first. Because we were not always candid, Ed Lee was. We were not always uh, diplomatic, Ed Lee was. He had so many of the wonderful qualities that he would have been easily the headhunter's recommended person to fill the job as the mayor. I can see it now as he is hanging out with your father, Angela, in heaven, and Jonathan with George. And for those of you on the Burton side, he's talking to the Lord about why Phil ought to be admitted. Ed Lee was that kind of an advocate. He would, on any given day, do what needed to be done to solve the problem and make it work. And I'm very pleased, Anita, that you allowed all of us in the building that Ed Lee had something to do with restoring following the 89 quake he was in city government at each of the steps and each of the way. And by the time this building opened, he was running the Department of Public Works, completing the job with Harlan and all of the other people that worked on it. Ed Lee was an unusual human being. It was the Saturday before his death on that early Tuesday morning, that he was at the Macrises raising money for a supervisor who wishes to be the person to handle the Board of Equalization for San Francisco. And in his usual generous fashion, he was incredibly respectful. He was introduced. I was standing in the audience watching, as I usually do, all other previous mayors. Ed Lee was supposed to introduce the honoree. He saw me, and as usual, he proceeded to say the introduction of the honoree will be done by the person that I want to identify and introduce and he proceeded to introduce me. Well now, I've not always been an easy person to tolerate over an extended period of time. <laughs> because I'm always a little off kelter here and there, as Nancy and Diane and others will tell you. But Ed Lee had so much respect. I would guess Diane I would guess, Gavin, if either of you had been present, he would have extended the same opportunity. And I'm sure, Jerry, he would have extended it to you. That's how Ed Lee functioned. He really wanted people to understand the peck and order and how important that kind of diplomacy really was. He had me introduce the honoree as he introduced me. And he did it in the fashion that he usually would do it. You know, you talked about, um, Charlotte, you talked about his joke ability. And uh, the daughters talked about it. He told terrible jokes. He laughed because he was trying to build enthusiasm <laughs> for his jokes. I don't remember one line that was any good. <laughs> but there is one I intend to close the column with next Sunday that Ed Lee said to me at Victor's house. He said, you know, I've been thinking, if President Trump is prosecuted and he has to serve time in a federal jail, maybe we should see if we couldn't get Alcatraz, back operational. <laughs> it 
Ed Lee's last joke. Mayor Brown, thank you so much for drawing back the curtain and letting us see the workings of that happy conspiracy. We're all surprised that you'd be involved in such a thing. <laughs> I'm Mark Andrus, the Episcopal Bishop of the Diocese of California, and it is a great honor it's beyond an honor to be here. I represent the San Francisco Interfaith Council, the executive director, Michael Pappas, its founder and president, Rita Simmel, and great interfaith colleagues and leaders like my friend uh, Beth Singer and Archbishop Cardellone and the great, uh, the great Amos Brown, a true hero in civil rights for, for so many decades, uh, the last, one of the last actual students of Martin Luther King and the only class that he ever taught. So I am here among many faith leaders uh, as one. I also uh, come at the end of this great celebration and I knew it would be what it has been. That is, tremendous leaders, not only of California, but of the United States, drawing from their own broken-hearted place to provide comfort to Mayor Lee's family, his immediate family, his extended family, and also, as Gavin Newsom said, to his staff and the mayors who worked with him, all of whom are brokenhearted, as are we all. This was all meant to be a celebration that provided what is called a balm. There is a balm in Gilead. Grief does not end, though, on schedule. It doesn't go away at the end of a beautiful service like this. These words, I pray, will lodge in your hearts and feed you and nourish you and comfort you in years and days to come. Presiding over us, are not only the stars and stripes of our great country, but the flag of our great city, the greatest city in our country. And on our flag, to my left, above us, is the phoenix, our symbol. It is the symbol of rebirth and new life. It was given to us as a sign of what a community can do in faith together pulling together in love, the only virtue that never ends. But it is also about individual rebirth. The phoenix is a symbol not only for communities, but for individual people. And the power that brings new life is not the power of pulling together or of self-will and determination, but the power that guides the universe. That power, which is love, will ensure that Ed Lee lives forever. Not only in memory, but in truth. I'm going to read a psalm, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely,
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please stand as you're able. Into your hands, O merciful God, we commend your servant Edwin. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of God. Amen. Now, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Comfort the afflicted. Be patient with everyone, but make no peace with oppression. Love and serve the divine, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the source of all life, the direction of all life, and the goal of all life, be among you and remain with you forever. to Anita and the family. You know how much we love you. You know how much Ed loved us as well. Ed would come to the Broadway Grill often to hear and support the music of pure ecstasy. So we just came by just to serenade you. Because we loved him. Not just called to say we love you. We just called to say how much we care. Not just called to say I love you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And I just call to say, and I love you. Yeah, and I just call to say how much I care. Just called to say I love you, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Let's take it up. Everybody sing with it. Come on, y'all. I just called to say and I love you, yeah. I just called. To say how much I care, and I do. And I just call to say, to say, and I love you, yeah. And I mean, I love my heart. That's Mayor Brown.
my heart. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 One more time. Come on, everybody. He's got the Everybody say, yo, he's got the whole. 